Quick, picture in your head the birth story of Jesus. You probably picture Joseph and a pregnant Mary with no place to go, stopping at the inn with no vacancy so they can stay in the stables. Mary gives birth to Jesus, places him in a manger, and the three wise men follow the star where they find him and give him a bunch of stuff we don't use anymore. Well, gold's still pretty cool. This is the version that we know from songs, church plays, and displays all over the land during Christmas. The problem is that's not how the story really happened. That's just a Frankenstein version stitched together from multiple parts in the Bible with a dash of pulp culture and lots of sugar on top. The real versions of the story are more bizarre, more contradictory, and imagine this, more violent. So pour some eggnog, kick back, and let's see how this nutty story really unfolds. We are told that Jesus was born of a virgin in Bethlehem in the most important birth in human history. The problem is, out of all the books in the Bible, only two of them tell the story, Matthew and Luke. The other two Gospels and all the other epistles and books of the New Testament never mention the birth story one single time. But as we will see, Matthew and Luke tell greatly differing stories that are obsessed with making sure that Jesus fulfills Old Testament prophecies, no matter how awkward or unlikely the story becomes. Let me first focus on the similarities that these two stories share. First, angels relayed the good news that Mary was pregnant with Jesus. Second, that Joseph and Mary somehow got to Bethlehem for Jesus to be born. Third, baby Jesus had visitors after his birth. And fourth, the family then left Bethlehem and eventually ended up in Nazareth. Let's take these one at a time. The Gospel According to St. Luke, Chapters 1 and 2 and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapters 1 and 2. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So who was told, Mary or Joseph? Now the apologist will say, well, the angels told both, and the authors are just telling it from different angles. Well, fair enough, but let's see if they keep that up. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Matthew starts simple. Jesus was born there, and we'll see later that it's in a house. Presto. Done. Luke must have heard that Joseph was not from Bethlehem, so he needed to get creative. And he goes a little overboard. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So instead of just putting them there, Luke comes up with this crazy census. And it's here we have our first major problem. Writing nearly 80 years after the events, Luke didn't know that he would be fact-checked on historical events. Augustus ruled from 44 or 42 BC until 14 AD, but there is absolutely zero record of any empire-wide census. Sending illiterate people back to their ancestral home would have been impossible, and if done, would have turned the Roman Empire upside down. At the very least, it would have been recorded. 
censuses were recorded a lot. Cyrenius is also known as Quirinius. The names are interchangeable. While Quirinius was governor of Syria, he did conduct a census, but it was in the year 6 to 7 AD, and it wasn't the whole empire. It was just a local Judea census. But to further complicate things, Matthew said that all of this happened in the days of Herod. Herod was king until he died in 4 BC. So Herod had been dead 10 to 11 years before the census of Quirinius was conducted. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. A manger. We hardly hear that word anymore, and if you do a simple Google image search for it, it's all pictures of baby Jesus, but a manger is basically a food trough. This has to be the most hygienically deficient birth in the history of births. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Herod sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. How many wise men are there? I've always been told there were three. But there could be just two, or five, or ten, twenty, who knows? Anyone with scientific knowledge will also object to a star somehow pointing out the location of a house. It's a cute story, but it's impossible. And you notice that in Matthew, the wise men find the baby in a cozy house and not laying down his sweet head in a container for horse spit and pig slop? And speaking of wise men, they aren't among the visitors named in Luke. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. A manger? Ew. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, into their own city, Nazareth. So they clipped his little wiener, they waited for Mary to quit all that woman bleeding, and they ended up in Nazareth. Pretty straightforward. Nothing really important to note here, right? Matthew begs to differ with what happens after they leave Bethlehem. You won't find this part in your local church nativity play. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. Then Herod was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in the coasts thereof, from two years old and under. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, that he shall be called a Nazarene. Slaying lots of babies at a time of the birth of another important person. Sound familiar? Sure. This is exactly what happened with Moses. The problem here, just like the Moses story, is that no historian records the mass murder of infants and toddlers at this time. 
This is not something that would go unnoticed by historians. But notice the very last sentence. Notice that Matthew is invoking the Old Testament again, and he's saying that it was foretold that Jesus would be a Nazarene. The problem is that there's no such prophecy in the Old Testament. Nazareth, a village, is completely unknown and never referred to in the Old Testament. This should cause the religious to second-guess the whole thing, but it doesn't. In an annotation to the King James Version, there is a reference to Judges 13.5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Two major problems here. First, this passage has nothing to do with the Messiah, but instead a prophecy to a barren woman telling her that she's going to become the mother of Samson. Second, Matthew mistranslates Nazarite. A Nazarite is not someone from Nazareth, but instead refers to someone who takes an ascetic or a lifestyle vow, where the person will refrain from cutting his hair, avoid alcohol, avoid corpses and graves. Basically, it's an old dirty-ass hippie. Jesus may have been a hippie, but he wasn't a Nazarite obviously didn't avoid alcohol, and he was manhandling dead bodies and raising the dead all the time. So it's 100%, even to a biblical literalist, that this prophecy was misread. Because it's obvious that these writers spend so much time making sure that prophecy comes true, an intellectually honest person will say that the authors who decided to actually attempt to refer to prophecy get it wrong several times, and therefore they're probably making it up. But let's review. Luke says that an angel told Mary, Quirinius Hellasensis. They go to Bethlehem, the inn is booked, so they stay in the stables. Mary has Jesus, lays him in a food trough, and an angel tells a bunch of farmers to come over and say hi. They leave, and they go to Nazareth. End of story. Matthew says that an angel told Joseph. Herod sends out the unnumbered wise men to find Jesus. They follow a star. They find him in a nice, cozy home. Joseph and Mary escape with the baby to Egypt while Herod kills all the babies in the area. Baby Jesus is returned to Nazareth to fulfill prophecy. So somehow it's okay to take these two stories, take out all the nasty parts, keep the cute parts, and declare it to be so. Fine. What you talking about? 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 This is Food for Thought. Seek God is the word, and the word is with God. Can you really punish the writer, the writer? Now can you really punish the writer, the writer? Now can you really punish the writer, the writer? See, God is the word, and the word was with God. Can you really punish the writer, the writer? Now can you really punish the writer, the writer? Revelation 22, 18, read. For I testify unto every man that is the word of the prophecy that's in this book. If any man should add unto these things, God should add unto him the plague that's in this book. If any man should take away from the word and the prophecy, God should take away his part out of the book of life. Now let me get this right. Call me some. Shakespeare said it first, count 46 up, then 46 down. The 46 verse 9, read it out loud. I'm digging up my spaceship, dog, right now. The cane got a ghost of a wife. I said, the devil got a bell of a bite. I cut his head, and Jesus is the thief in the night. Are you scared? Then if you ain't, then go to bed. Have you noticed in the beginning that no words are read? But in the New Testament, they tell you what Jesus said. In the beginning, that was God and what the Bible said. So the words should be read and read it. You got three kings of Egypt, three pyramids of Giza. I'm a philosopher and knowledge will teach ya. No man can live on bread alone. That's right. So listen to the song. We got a church on every corner. Your brain's gone fishing. Your mind is conditioned. The circus in town. Yeah, I call them magicians. They selling dog wishes. I call them wolf tickets. See, look, no. Yeah, something ain't right. Why? And why we always got to fight? Too many denominations, but they serve the same God. Yeah, shit smell like shit, so I guess this a fraud. Everybody telling me I need to holler at God. They know not what they do, I guess I don't know what I'm saying. So what the use of praying to the blind head man? I can't even think I'm lost for words. Come on, bring the chords back and partner, call me curve. I'ma let my seat back, I gotta smoke on this earth. See, God is the word, and the word was with God. Can you really punish the writer, the writer? Like, can you really punish the writer, the writer? Like, can you really punish the writer, the writer? See, God is the word, and the word was with God. Can you really punish the writer, the writer? The writer, the writer. I got 
That's something that I see chill straight up your spine. Read really through the running 14, 22 through 29. I don't need a pass of dog, I need a glass of wine. I don't need a picture, y'all looking for a teacher, dog. Riddle me this fat man and how they can't get a wife before his mama third child. Note yourself, it ain't no women around. Get your head out the cloud, ain't no time pass by. That's a bold face. See, man, man is afraid of what he don't understand. Too many inconsistencies in the hand of a man. Translation, I call him fool pit pimps. And guess who's the simps? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Talk to y'all for a minute. It ain't that I don't believe in God, it's just I don't trust in man. You understand? See, God is the word, and the word is with God. Can you really punish the writer, the writer? Like, can you really punish the writer, the writer? 